Jim's talking. Oh, wow. Awesome. Right. Welcome, welcome, everyone, uh, back on Telesports. Um, wherever you are, wherever you find yourself in the world, we hope that you will be safe. Welcome once again from just from Telesports. We'd like to do our introduction to our special guest, Namibian International Scrum Half, Damien Stevens, all the way from Wolfish Bay, the west coast of Namibia. How are you doing, Damien? How are you doing today? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Sorry, man. It like it was breaking up a bit. No, but I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Okay. Quite exciting day. Looking forward to this chat with the two brothers. Fantastic, fantastic. How's it going? You uh, know, um, so uh, we've got we've got all this. <laughs> That's my boy. Good, fantastic. Uh, Great seeing you. <laughs> we've got Terrell tonight joining us as well. Um, we've got, obviously, they've got a good banter. I know you guys have been, uh, you've got a good relationship, obviously, knowing each other on and off the pitch. And it's so good to, obviously, for you to join us, Terrell. We appreciate it. Uh, hopefully, also, everyone, wherever you find yourself, uh, keep joining us. Share this. Also, like it. And it's free to subscribe. If you can, subscribe and share it. So also, um, just to a reflection before we get started, just wanted to say also once again from uh, last week, uh, we obviously had Shui on. Uh, what a what a what a fantastic guy, uh, great character, and also for everyone who's supporting us, who've been <laughs> interacting on the chat, asking questions, it's been absolutely brilliant. Thank you for that. But for tonight, here we go. I hope you guys are ready. Fasten your seat belts. Uh, let's get into it. So, I would like to know from you, Damien, uh, what's what's been on my mind is, what age did you start actually realizing, you know what, I'm going to be a professional rugby player? Yeah, that's actually a funny question, Ryan, because reason being is because, like, I used to play cricket, and that uh, used to do athletics, so and rugby was always there in the family, but it was never actually a dream. Like oh, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna I'm gonna be a professional rugby player. But I think once I made the under sixteen Namibian team, and we went down to Q to Queenstown in South Africa, and then I started realizing, but yeah, you, I can actually compete with the guys back in South Africa, and that's when that's when I started realizing that. Like, this is actually something that I can take on and something that I can really look forward to in my future. Fantastic. Nice. Um, I was oh, going to uh, say... Um, no, go on, go on, Daryl. Go on, Daryl. Go on, Daryl. You were saying? No, no, I, I just actually wanted to say, uh, him mentioning that uh, he was a... Uh, him mentioning that he was a cricketer. Uh, mm -hmm. So... I'm thinking. So, what what made you choose then uh, between cricket or rugby? What, why why rugby? I think what made it easy was the fact that my dad used to play rugby and he used to play provincial rugby back in South Africa when he was growing up. And after my under 16 year in 2000 and let's see, that was 2011. And then my dad applied for me to go to school in South Africa. So then I actually went for rugby and that's where it actually started. So then at school, I was just playing cricket for fun, but rugby was actually the main reason why I went to South Africa. So that kind of made it easy to make the decision to be a rugby player at the end of the day. Because um, from good. just for anyone out there listening, um, you know, the reason why we also like to obviously go to the root and ask these type of questions is someone out there might be playing different sports, you know, struggling to think, oh, you know what, which which direction do I see myself go into? And uh, I think you're a good example of, you know, how you 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 know you played multi sports from 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 what it sounds like, uh, like you obviously a good cricketer and you're actually passionate about it as well. For anyone not knowing. 
um, you know, how how high did you or how far did you go uh, playing cricket, or how far do you think you could have carried on if uh, if you ended up playing cricket? Uh, like I played, I played cricket for Namibia since under 13. So I uh, listen, I I can't hear you guys. It's kind of breaking down. Can you guys hear me? Can Can you hear? Can you hear now? Can you hear now? Can you hear now? Uh, apologies, uh, everyone, for anyone listening. Just a bit of the no, I can't, bit I can't. Of technical uh, problems. Brian, must, I, must I reset it? Uh, yeah, you could do that. Hey, Just show a thumbs up if you want me to reset it because I can't hear you guys. Yeah, so you can. I can hear you guys now. You can reset if you can. Um, and then we'll just bounce back. It's all good. We'll stay online. Uh, if you just want to quickly reset, that's fine. Um, because sometimes, obviously, with internet connections, it's all good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's reset fine. Reset if you can. That's fine. Yeah, sorry for the okay. disruption there. You, you can't uh, hear. You can't some problems hear. With, the, with the Wi-Fi or earphones or something, you know. It's, uh, I guess COVID's taken over everything. <laughs> Okay. He's back again. Here we go. Let's let's try okay, again. Perfect. I can let's hear. I, 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 um, I can hear both of you. Okay. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, yeah. So I was saying, Damien, you know, just double check, Daryl. You can hear, Damien. You can hear. Perfect. Also. Awesome. Oh, okay. Here we go. Yeah. That's the thing. That's why we we remain flexible. You know what I mean? So. It's all good. Um, the question I was asking, Damien, you, you're a good example of, you know, being a good cricket, but also knowing that you can play rugby. You ended up choosing rugby, but I was I was asking, uh, how far do you feel if you carry on taking cricket serious? How far do you think you could have gone? Do you think you would have gone all the way, or obviously it think... depends on situation. Yeah, that definitely depends on the situation, right? And, and, and I think if I if I made a decision to play cricket, I would have probably made the, the senior national team and I would have been part of the success that the current cricket Namibia's national team has, has, has reached. I would have probably definitely been there. But obviously, situations mm. changed. And like even if I made the decision back then that cricket's going to be my career, like... I, I don't know where it would have taken me at the end mm. of the day. You understand? Like, it's easy to look back now and say that mm. uh, it would have been like this. Even back then when I made the rugby decision, like, you don't... I didn't know where it was going to take me. And that's also, like... And also to ask the question you, you asked before the whole, like, I didn't hear you guys. Like, I started playing cricket for Namibia when I was 13 years old. And mm. then I played up until under 17. For, for, for cricket number so I played basically all the junior age groups cricket ah. yeah and then I also played for for the for Paul Boyd's high schooling but also for me I don't think any kid or any boy in school boy or girl should even put themselves under pressure when it comes to mm. making a decision which sport you should do or like because I would just say let it all play out the way it's supposed to play out because you don't know where life can take you at the end of the day. But luckily for me, that the decision that I made took me this far. Yeah. So that's, um, a, so that's the thing. No, no that's, very that's good, good Damien, to know, you know, because no, I've, uh, I've always wondered, I've always wondered, you know, seeing you, um, just for the people out there, you know, that people that have seen you before, people, you know, parents uh, out there maybe struggling with, not knowing if the kids should uh, play sports or play rugby or cricket or mm -hmm. any other contact sport. Um, you are quite a, a petite guy, a, a smallish guy, people would say, you know, hence you playing scrum off. Nothing against <laughs> scrum off yet. Yeah? Um, but, um, you Excuse know, <laughs> you know <laughs> one would think because of your size, you would, you would, it would have been, let's say, safer, you know, uh, mm. for a parent now looking. Mm -hmm. You know, from the from the sideline now, to maybe go into the cricket direction, but then you took on the rugby direction. Obviously, you've got a big heart, and you know you've got a, a good attitude and everything. But it just goes to show that 
you've played at the highest level, you know, uh, for, for obviously representing your country and provincial level as well, in a very physical sport. And, and you know, God, God given, uh, you haven't done anything, you haven't uh, got any um, bad um, rugby injuries or anything, but then yeah, that's obviously that's looking that's after yourself, touch wood, yes. Obviously looking after yourself is a big part. So what would you say is, or what would the message be for you to, for, for parents, for any kid out there, you know, like you just said, it's not about putting pressure on yourself, but it's about um, just looking after yourself and enjoying it. Mm. But what, what would your message be, you know, if, if people are, are struggling with that question? Uh, Daryl, the thing is, you can look at it from different perspectives. Like whether you decide to go do cricket, do athletics, do hockey, do rugby, or whether you decide I'm not going to do sports anymore and I'm just going to focus on my studies and I'm going to focus on academics and all that. At the end of the day, whatever decision you make, yes, you're gonna, you might reach success. Yes, you can reach success or yes, you're going to fail. So for me, it's either three options. You're going to be great or you're going to be mediocre or you're going to suck at it. So, yeah. so, so, so that's basically why I, or how I look at it because life can give you so much challenges. I mean, you can decide that I'm going to focus on my studies. I'm going to become an accountant. I'm going to have the best grades. And then you might finish and you might not even get a job. Mm. You understand? Life, yeah. life has all its challenges. We don't know what the future holds. That's why I just yeah. say, like, don't put pressure on yourself at the end of the day, especially when it comes to that stuff. Because you're just going to, just like, your head's just going to start falling out. <laughs> and, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> no, good. good. <laughs> no, that's well said, Damien. That's well said because that's well said. I love like the fact that you've actually touched on, you know, just basically being in the moment and, and hopefully making a decision that you know that you can go with um, and hopefully can keep you, you know, if you don't have a purpose, the way I always see it, if you don't have a purpose, then you'll be going around and around and, and you know, just in and out of your, but touching on your potential and just not really knowing what to do. Um, just being busy, yeah. basically. But you've you've really, um, for everyone out there listening, um, I'm sure that they you know they can relate. And I'm I'm glad that you've you've mentioned it, because uh, the next the next thing that was on my mind was, um, you know, I always like to ask this question as well about what was your why? What's your why? Why do you do what you do? Because everyone plays rugby for or sports for their own reasons. What is your why? Yeah. For me personally, I don't. I wouldn't say that I really have a why. Why I play rugby or why I do whatever I do. I just like. Luckily for me, I'm doing what I love doing, and that's uh -huh. the biggest bonus ever for me. But the like, I would give a reason, like, because at the end of the day, like, it's my future now. It's my job. So. I'm going to get up. I'm going to do what I need to do because I'm earning a salary at the end of the day. But it's also like there's so much kids out here mm. looking up to you, like especially for me coming from Valfus by. I mean, before me, there was Chris Underbunta mm. and that's a guy from Valfus that I looked up mm. to when I was a youngster. And then even, I, then even playing with, with him also, it, right? like, it inspired me so much. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> and then like, <laughs> this, like, like look at Daryl. Eugene, those like yourself, that I am, though you guys are all the guys that I looked up to when I was a youngster. I mean, when you, the when the two of you played in two thousand and eleven, Alfie Bay, I used <laughs> Alfie Bay, Alfie Bay, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Alfie but like Bay. when when the two of you were playing, yeah. when the two of you were playing in two thousand and eleven World Cup, I used to wake up early in the morning and I used to watch you guys play. And I mean, the World Cup after that year, I was playing with Tero, with the, with mm. Chris Ander, with Eugene, with all those guys that were playing. So that's so that's basically my reason for doing what I'm doing, to inspire the younger guys to not just live where they or think that where they are now and where they are living now, that that is just where they should be for the rest of their life. That they should try and reach out. Go try and go get out of your comfort zone and let yeah. let life challenge you. And then you try and hit life back. And then see how it you. That Hey, no, put that on a t-shirt. Let life challenge you. <laughs> you challenge life back. That's a th I, I like stuff like that, Damien. You're giving me ideas. <laughs> Daryl, you're going to say, 
<laughs> no, no, it's it's good, you know, hearing uh, Damien speak, uh, you know, uh, uh, proudly about, you know, his challenges or proudly about what really is driving him, you know, as a sportsman, not not only just as a rugby player, but then, you know, I'll just for the people out there, you know, the, one of the things, you know, obviously you, you were talking about, you know, all the difficulties, all the struggles or, or how you work hard and everything, but then, you know, for, for obviously for people out there uh, who just maybe heard that you, you actually schooled in, in South Africa. And as a young kid, you know, leaving your, your, your parents' house, go, going to South Africa, you know, having to, to stay there, you know, different environment, growing up there and, you know, achieving what you, you've achieved, obviously, it's, it, it must have been really difficult, but then obviously pleasing as a person to now look back and see that, you know, I've, I've actually been through it, I've been through the trouble waters, I'm, I'm seeing, I'm, I'm reaping the reward. So uh, what, what was that experience like, you know? Um, yeah, Daryl, like, as I mentioned, like, just now that, like, it, it has been a very, big, very big challenge for me. And luckily for me, my parents supported me, whether they couldn't do it financially to allow me to go to South Africa. Because, I mean, for the two years, grade 11 and grade 12, that I was schooling there, my parents had to pay every month. They had to pay my school fees. They had to pay my hostel fees. And all of the people, like, people that know that I went to Power Boys, most of the people think that I went there on a bursary, but which is not the case. So... I was basically under pressure because I knew going there, I had to make it everything work. I had to do good in academics, whether I do sport or not. I, I, it must be a success, basically, because my parents are paying a lot of money for me to be there. And they, they definitely couldn't afford it. And I know that because up until today, my, my parents still owe the school like 20,000 rand. You understand? So, so that's basically the thing. But my parents took it up on themselves to put me in that situation and... I made a success from it. So, but at the end of the day, not, not, not everyone's parents can do that. Mm. And in, in, in life today, it's, it's, it's kind of yeah. difficult to go out there for yourself, try and make a living or try and like, you understand, but I would always say like, go to people, like people you look up to, whether you are shy, like put your pride aside because mm. putting your pride aside can make you reach so much more stuff. Like, go out there, try and reach out to people that can help you in your future because the lives that most people live, they don't want to live here. I mean, I'm here in Balfour's Park today. Mm. You guys are there. Like, COVID, as he does, COVID is a great example. We don't want to be where we are at this moment in time because we had so much plans for ourselves. But we are here now, but we need to focus on how are we going to get out of this and get, get become greater out of this. Oh, that's good, man. It's good to know. Hey, man. I, I, hey, man. Um, sorry, Daryl. I was just gonna say, no, no, um, uh, yeah. Damien, I, I love the, I love the, the honesty. You know what I mean? And because, like, like even with our parents, they, they sacrificed a lot. Do you know what I mean? They sacrificed a lot as well. And it wasn't, it wasn't always easy. You know, it, it's still never like even now. Like you said, look at the situation. Our world is. We're always being challenged. But one thing that I can take from what you say is. You know, I, I feel I feel it's uplifting to hear what you knew, what you were aware of when you had to go to South Africa. You were you you fully understood, you know, what you actually yeah. had to go and do. And now I, you know, with all with all respect, I can, you know, I, I take my head off to your to your parents for you know for uh, so. Supporting you and right. nurturing you, and because I was also going to ask from um, any role models that you that you looked at, you know, like when you were actually a little bit younger, um, that you would like to touch on, if if you don't mind. Any any role models? Yeah, in obviously, particular? as a younger boy, my role model, my, yeah, my role model was my father as a youngster. Like, I mean, he was the one that introduced me to rugby. He was the one that disciplined me from a young age. He mm. was the one that's always there, whether there's nothing at home. He was the one that would go out there and try and make a living for us. So he, he like he used to be my my role model, and up until today, he still is. Like obviously, I have my own rugby rugby role models, and there's so much motivational speakers as well, and people that's millionaires and like people that has reached success in their own environment. So there's a lot a lot of role models. But for me in particular, I would just say my father and my mother supporting him through all those awesome. difficult times and. And the thing for me, why I can definitely say that it's him because I've been part of that life. I've been present. 
Yeah. Where, whether I was away yeah. in South Africa most of the time, but I've been present, I've been part of the struggle and see him my, trying to make yeah. a better life for himself, my father, my mother and myself yeah. and my, my brother and my sister. That was mm. brilliant, man. Awesome. Brilliant. That awesome. Was, it's, it's, it's always good. It's always good, you know, to, to actually see it. Obviously, Damien, you're, you're younger than myself. And I'm a few younger, younger than but then what, what I think is most important from our generation is because nowadays we, we're so used to getting things quick and, you know, having an app for everything. But then one thing that we can take away from our parents or that generation is that sacrifice was mm. definitely key. Because they were a generation where they had to sacrifice a lot for other people to obviously gain and be open now and, you know, having, you know, a lot of opportunities. And obviously that's, that's our responsibility for the next generation as well. But then seeing you talk like that, you know, freely yeah, true, and, true. Uh, you know, mentioning your parents like that, yeah, that's brilliant for a young guy. Um, yeah, that's excellent. Man. Yeah, and that's, I think um, what to what has played a big role. I'm so sorry, Ryan. I think what has played a big Yo, role go, in the way on. that I think basically mm. it's because no, no, no. If, ever since I went to high school, all my friends were like four, three mm. years older than me. You understand? Like I, I had my age group friends, but all my friends like were older than me. When I got into the Namibian oh. group, I became friends with Daryl. You understand? Eugene, <laughs> Cassandra, and they are all like five, six years older than me. So I think oh, it's just oh. it's just the way that you select your friends and the all oh, not your friends, the environment you want uh, to put yourself around that yeah. and then that and that challenges you to think and to challenge yourself in life also mm. that's my boy that's fantastic yeah. it, it, we, we we always hear you know as youngsters you know you you've got to surround yourself with the right people you know i'm sure you guys have heard it as well but sometimes sometimes we um we 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 end up we end up uh with people that you think they are your friends, but they're doing completely something completely different. And that that's not always good for, for a person. Does that make sense? Because you never, you never end up growing, you know, and, and, and sometimes that could be a, if I, if I just, if, what I'm trying to say, sometimes that could hinder, you know, you hinder your true development, mm. you know, because you just become complacent. Mm. But it's it's a good thing that you've mentioned it, that you you know you select people that are slightly older than you, whether that was deliberate or you know just it just happens, because you feel like you want to challenge yeah. yourself, you want to you want to think that way, you want to become better and keep growing. So that's a really good point that they made, definitely, definitely. So yeah, the the next thing, Damien, um, what what I what I was going to ask was. You, you know, you're a full-time rugby player, and I mean, it sounds wow. You know, professional rugby player. You know, you've worked hard. You achieved your goals. You played <laughs> two World Cups. Do you get what I'm saying? Two World Cups, right? And and that's an amazing achievement. Trust me. Like, I mean, that that's phenomenal to play two World Cups, right? Now, now the question I want to ask: What is a typical day for Damien Stevens? When you in a working environment where things are, you know, before COVID, and also now that obviously COVID has happened, and you know, you we still in season, but the season's not started, stuff like that. So, how what's a typical day for Damien mm. at the, you know, in, in a in a working environment and a non-working environment? Okay, that's that's actually an interesting question, though, because a lot of people have their own mindset about it, and it's actually nice to always answer people on this. Like, as a rugby player, definitely early mornings, you would wake up at 5, 6, obviously depending where you are. I'm basically going to speak for when I was in Paraguay. Mm -hmm. So I would, I would wake up at 5, because we had to be at training, like, before, before half past 6. And then... Like we get in the car, drive off to training, get to training. So obviously you have to do the, all the weighing, stretching, all that stuff that you need to do before even doing anything else. And then after that, we used to get breakfast at work. So we were lucky that we didn't have to do anything at home when waking up. So we used to get breakfast 
And then after breakfast, like individual meetings with your coach, team meetings, what's the goals for the day? What do we want to go into for the week? So then, so that's when you set your goals. And then obviously training field. So then we would, we would first have our gym sessions. Obviously each day you focus on different body parts or you focus on weights today or agility. And then we would go on the field. Then we'd have a split session backs forwards. And then we would have a team session and then focusing on what we discussed in the meeting. And then after that shower, get in your car, go home and then just sleep for the afternoon <laughs> or you have lunch, sleep for the afternoon and then wake <laughs> up and then you start prepping. <laughs> the nice part about it is that most of your afternoons you have off so you can kind of do anything. Oh, right. Like do. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then okay. now, <laughs> yeah. Representing them over here. Nice. <laughs> nice. One. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> Love the vibe, man. That's pretty yeah, and cool. Then eh? now, <laughs> and then now in COVID, like, oh, this is just something so frustrating. And especially now seeing that rugby has started in the world and like I'm stuck here yeah. because I'm going to the US and we're only starting next year. So it's so frustrating. But now I'm just trying to keep myself really busy. Like I tried, like I start, like I found it out now that I'm actually good at doing um woodworking carpentry work so i'm just keeping myself busy with that <laughs> yeah daryl nice, daryl was no nice. I, sometimes i've learned on the groups so yeah so that's what i'm just keeping myself busy with that's just amazing time to pass by yeah so that's basically what my days are up to these days but that's that's oh. a that's a very good thing as well you know right, that's that's right. positive so, side so, of so. Uh-huh. that that's the positive side of what what this whole situation down, down. is yeah, I'm just saying that that's a, a positive side that, that this uh, whole situation has brought to to sports people. You know that you could upskill yourself now yeah. in a different environment where where about normally you wouldn't have time or you would have to do it in a longer period. Like like most of the guys studied um, in for courses yeah. like two years. They would study it in three years. You know, so which is you know at the end of the day it's it's, it's beneficial as well. Luckily as sportsmen we 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 kind of used to adapting very quick um, and we kind of used mm. to, you know, that pressure and con- constantly, you know, developing ourselves. And so I think it's really good. You know, I've, yeah. I've seen some of his work, Ryan. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Hey, you know, you got to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere. No, but it's good work. It's, it's, it's good seeing him, you know, see, it's how good work. But it, there's a good project out, uh, that, that I've seen of him. Let, let me rather put it that way. <laughs> no, that's class. I think I no, think but that's, Daryl, Daryl, that's to add, to, uh, Daryl, to add, to go, add what on, you just said now, like, like how 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 COVID COVID has challenged us in in a lot of in a lot of ways. Like I think for me personally, like yes, it's frustrating not playing rugby. Yes, it's not nice being home because I'm not used to it because I've been away for very long. But and the nice part yeah. for me is now that I'm actually spending time with my family now. And it's something that I haven't done. It's the first time in eight years that I've been home for longer than one month. Sure. So it's, it's like, it's really actually a nice time for me. I'm enjoying it with my family. So that's actually also another thing and another challenge also, because I'm not used to being around them. So now like mm. I need to start learning some new stuff. Like I have my own ways and now I <laughs> do it the family way because you know how we are. You're always gonna hear, hey, yeah. you're the youngster, you need to do what we say or whatever the case might be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was good, man. Uh, uh, okay. So so you know, like where I, I keep saying this, um where I am at at the moment, or you know, for the last years, I'm I'm on the Isle of Man, and where we are, it, there's nothing. It's just normal, and it's so weird when you switch the TV on. I don't watch a lot of TV, but you know, if you see stuff that's happening, especially over in the UK, in England, um, or wherever, you see people walking around with masks, and they're back to lockdown and social distancing. You know, and it's it's really tough because you forget. Like where we are, you can quickly forget, you know, what, what's actually going on. Um, so, you know, I, I feel like having a platform like this is, why don't we utilize that, you know, and inspire people because you used the word inspire just before, Damien, and I like the fact that you've mentioned that. That's, that's the reason why we're here is to, 
to tell to tell everyone that's always wondering what what's it like or what what's Damien like as a as a person? I always see him walk there or drive here, you know, and people always have their own thoughts or what they hear of, of a person or do you know what I mean? Yeah. And and I'm so glad that you've you've you know what you've said is is spot on, is right on the money because and the fact that you're actually doing a bit of carpentry, who would have thought, you know, Damien is doing a bit of woodwork as a hobby. You know, who knows that can be done into something. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so now you yeah, might bump into so, someone in town, and they, of they, now they can strike up player, a conversation yeah. about woodwork. <laughs> no, man, yeah, it's pretty true. cool. That's, honestly, yeah, it's not I, just I think, about rugby. I, I, I'm on that. <laughs> exactly. That's fantastic, man. That's a show. Um, yeah. So, so the next thing that I was thinking of. Now I know I keep talking about this, right? Do you remember your first training session with Namibia? Also, do you remember your first test match for Namibia? What can you remember from it? I can't. I can't really remember the first training session. Obviously, <laughs> in my one, mind, it would have been probably <laughs> it was. It was the first. It was the start of preseason for Rugby World Cup 2015. So I can basically just right. remember I, me and Kalisander arrived the Sunday and then I met Daryl and Eugene for the first time. And then I'm sure the Monday we did testing. That's basically all I can remember uh, from the first day. And yeah, and, yeah. and most, of the guys were, most of the guys were really nice though. But coming back, coming to my first test, firstly, I was scared for my first test. Not because not I'm playing like international rugby, Nothing to do with the rugby, but just off the pitch, like the the, the tradition of being a new Namibian rugby player. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> so that's basically the whole thing oh, that has stressed oh, me oh. out. And oh, getting back okay. to the shade afterwards, like that was the most stressed out. But being on the field, running out with my Namibian jersey, singing my national anthem for the first, like for the first time as a national player, and watching seeing my, my parents in the stand. Like that was really such a such a proud mm -hmm. moment for me, wearing mm -hmm. the Namibian jersey for the first time, because it mm -hmm. I, like it just brings so much memories. Like we would drive to 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 go and watch the national mm -hmm. team play when I was still schooling in Namibia with my parents, and we would just go there. It would be such proud moments, and like as a small boy, you'd play around with the rugby ball with your brother, mm -hmm. and just like you understand. And now, mm -hmm. like I was the one being on the pitch, singing the national anthem, representing my country. <laughs> like working hard to go to the World Cup for like it's just such a proud moment. So it was yeah. for playing my first test for Namibia that's was just cool, a right? proud moment. No, no, really that's that. that's the, the thing is also um before you jump in Terrell, Damien, the thing is I really visualize sometimes. I'm not saying people are not passionate about Namibia, you know, Namibia Namibia. I'm talking about the the public war. But it's just nice to hear that you know, you drove all the way, you guys would would drive from Wolfie's Bay to Winter to go and watch the Mobile play. You know, that's some effort for that. That's like four hundred kilometers. Yeah. If I'm right, four hundred and twenty three kilometers. But but yeah, yeah, yeah it's exactly. just an, it's just a thought. Imagine imagine if more people start thinking like that in the Mobile. How you know, get more passionate about the national team. You know, I'm not it's it's been better from what it what it was in the past. It's been a lot better, you know, the yeah. support. The, the love, the people, the public have been showing the national team. It, it's been brilliant. But I'm talking about to make it better. You know, we always want to make things better. And and it's just nice yeah. to hear that, you know, how passionate it, you sound like since a kid. And then you end up, you end up driving to go, you know, to want to go and play, you know, your mom and dad in the stands. How old were you? Do you remember how old were you when you made the debut? I was 20 years of age at that time. And that was in, in 20 July, years of age. Check that it out. Was in July. And my birthday uh -huh. was just so yeah, and I just turned I just turned like twenty the month before. So yeah. I was still still that's, a very, very, very young boy. No, I mean, that's that's very impressive. I, because the reason why but, I was asking how old were you, Damien? But Ryan to is because tactically and technically your skill your skill set is brilliant. So so sorry, Damien, go on. Uh, it was just it was just jumping. You were saying? You were saying? No, I just wanted to touch on. I just wanted to touch on when when you said like 
tactics, changing people's mindset on supporting the national team and all that. So for me, like, I, I just wanted to jump in and say that once one, once people see results, that's where, that's where people want to be. I understand. When people, and, and in life itself, when, when you reach success, a lot of people want to be around you because they want to look like they're part of the success. But... So I just like I would just say like if like as if the national team continues performing the way we've done for the past six, seven years, then definitely it's gonna just grow, 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 and we'll just get more support from the world, especially just not from Namibians. Yeah, so that's just basically what I wanted to say on that. No, that's that's brilliant. Daryl, um, you wanted to you wanted to uh, say something before I was uh, yeah uh, commenting on that. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's, you know, just to concur with, with Damien, you know, um, growing, up, growing up as a kid, going to the games and uh, seeing the stadium full and hearing all the stories about, you know, the, the movie of old playing against Western Promise and beating them, you know. So that was always a goal of us, for, for myself now, to be a part of a new Namibia that actually makes something big in Namibia, getting that crowd again wanting to play at home with a packed out, full, uh, sold out stadium. But then talking about Damien, uh, you know, just to come back on his point that he drove from Wolfish Bay, you know, for me growing up, obviously in Ventuk and in Wolfish Bay, um, a, dream, a dream of mine was always to, to actually play for my national team in Wolfish Bay, you know. And so then luckily enough, it happened that way that ah. Damien could experience that mm-hmm. and a bunch of us from the coast were you know, in Wolfish Bay, and that was, you know, for me, yeah, was that's, that's my, that was my last game for Namibia, in Namibia, and it was in Wolfish Bay, so that, it shows you how important it is to visualize and to believe, and if you look at the, the sold yeah, out so crowds we yeah, had, so we had African Cup, uh, when we, when we won the African Cup and qualified, the, the, if, even in the, the last game when we played Kings here, the stadium was sold out, you know what I mean, and, went down to the coast, sold out. So that's the legacy. And that's, for me, for us watching, you know, the the, the Namibians of old, you know, like the South Lostwares and Karen Mans and them, you know, we wanted to be, take that legacy on it. And I think, personally, I think through the years we've learned trial and error and that last, this last team actually did that, you know, that gave the confidence in the Namibian people that this team is our team, you know what I mean? Because every game was sold, like packed. But uh, so, you know, I just uh, I hope mm-hmm. and I believe yeah. that, you know, they, they can really take it further. But then, uh, uh, Damien, just to follow on that, too, we're talking about inspiring people and setting goals and stuff. So obviously you're a guy that, you know, that sets goals very high and work very hard to achieve them. Um, do, do you think it's very important for all the youngsters out there? Do you, or how important do you think it is, whether it's on the field or off the field? Um, Daryl, I think that it's very, it's very important to set goals. Like personally, for me, I need to set goals because when I went to South Africa, like ever since arriving there, I was just competing with the best players in South Africa. So you can't just pitch up there and expecting to dominate anyone, whether it's in the business world mm-hmm. or whatever. You need to prep, you need to set goals, and you need to believe in the goals that you've set. And the only way to believe in your goals that you set is for you to work hard towards those goals. So yeah, so for the for everyone watching, like like goal setting goals is very, very important, but you need to set smaller goals also that's gonna prep you to reach those higher goals. And that's yeah. gonna and that's gonna make it so so much easier. And that's where your success is gonna become because with setting those big goals, setting those small goals and working hard to reach them takes a lot of discipline. A lot of sacrifice, like yeah. thoughts. You can you can name all of those nice words, but until tears and sweat hasn't run down your your face, and you and you haven't reached those goals, then you need to go back and you need to start working hard yeah. because reaching success is just it's never gonna come easy. It's never gonna come yeah. easy. And it's and it's great to to actually hear you speak about setting small goals because I remember uh, leading up to the World Cup, we had this thing where where Coach Phil had us. Uh, set goals for three months ahead and then six months ahead and then breaking it down for every until training or even just in day goals so that keeps you like kind of focused on the end goal 
whether it's a year from now, but then you have to achieve every goal that, that you set, you know, for the day, for the three months, for the six months. So in, in yeah. every world, it's, 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 it's important to have goals, but then there's levels to that, that as well. There's, pro, there's a process to that as well. And all of these things kind of keep you on the road, you know, that, that straight arrow path, and, you know, and then mm-hmm. if you fall off the path, then you would have, a, you would have a, something to fall back on, to get back on mm-hmm. that, that path, you know. Cool, cool. No, that. Yeah, definitely, Daryl. So um, that that's a very good question, um, Daryl. That you to ask. You know, is it important to set goals? Because all of us have ideas, but a lot of people don't write them down. And what you what we sometimes forget mm-hmm. is you're working hard, but you've got some type of thing in your mind. But our issue is sometimes we don't set goals, and that's why we always miss the bus. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sometimes yeah. in certain things, yeah. but if we end up setting yeah. goals, it's more direct. You know, it's more it's more precise. It keeps you on track. You also you don't panic. Yeah. When yeah. things happen, because you know you've not achieved where you need to be. So mm-hmm. it's a very good question. You know, the next one. Um, mm-hmm. I see. I just want to quickly interact with everyone listening once again. For everyone that's on, thank you so much once again. Like, subscribe. It's for free to subscribe. But it really helps for us on this platform to keep doing what we're doing. And also, uh, we've got a quick question um, that uh, Gumi has been asking any Gumi. young talent that that you would like to see in the national team in the near future. Yeah? He's asking any young talent that you know of they would like to see in the near, in the future, in Namibia, in the near future. Um, at this moment in time, like, I like as I said, I haven't been in Namibia for a very, very long time. So I'm not here to specifically see what talent is in Namibia or what schoolboys have grown up through the system. And you understand? So it's, it's kind of it's kind of very difficult for me to answer that question to Gumi. Okay. So but I would say is that I know specifically that Namibia does have a lot of young talent. It mm. does really do like for me, I had to go out, out of Namibia to become a national player. Going into 2019 mm. World Cup, there were so much younger players then. So and they were doing good on the on the at the Rugby World Cup 2019, which is the biggest platform as a rugby player. So we as Namibians, as as young players, are definitely capable of becoming good rugby players in the first place. Mm. But there is work that needs to be done and developing within the country that needs to mm. be done at a steadfast speed to develop those players yeah. for us as a country to reach so much more success because so we are definitely capable of doing that because i mean the rest of the world are doing it small countries like uruguay russia yeah. even in paraguay yeah. where i was at like well they have a professional team most of the clubs are actually professional but they aren't even close to where uruguay is or even close to where namibia is so i would the people that's in charge of that situation in namibia definitely need to work hard for our young players and players in Amobia to develop. Mm. Mm. Obviously, obviously, yeah. um, I can, if, if I can just jump on what you're saying, we know that there is development taking place, you know, like, like in Amobia, but what you're saying is, you know, we would like to see more of it and, and hopefully it can, we can have continuity, you know, looking after the players, um, like by, by, by keeping them engaged, like what they've been doing, but obviously, like you're saying, we, we want it on a, on a, you know, we want it, we want to see that continuity because then we can have consistent performances, like what you guys have done in the World Cup. The performance was absolutely phenomenal, and and I, you know, I, 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 the reason why I'm saying that, it looked like there was a belonging. It looked like it was smooth, you know. I know the games was extremely tough, but it just looked good to watch because you guys had a nice structure as well, and. For, for people watching, sometimes for people that don't know, they just watch the game. But if you know what you're watching, you know, you can see uh, like patterns, one, three, three, one, two, four, two, or two, five, one, you know, like the shape, you know, you know what you're watching. But anyway, not, you know, it's not about me. It's yeah. all about Damien Stevens tonight. So just wanted to make sure let's keep everyone <laughs> engaged. Damien, tactically and tactically, yeah. right? tactical and technical you are very strong right your skill set is very strong right and i know that took a lot of 
hard work uh, and, and, you know, training hours and hours. What would you say is your superpower? What was, what's Damien's strengths? What's your superpower? I would say my superpower would be on the field specifically be communication. Because as a scrummer for me, it's important to keep everyone on the field engaged and sit like like and switched on every single second of the game because at the end of the I'm the scrum off, I am the one like that's in the middle of the forwards and the back. So I'm the link. So if I'm down and I'm not the one setting the pace on the field and doing what I'm supposed to do, then the whole team's just gonna be down. So I would say my strongest point would be um communicate my communication with on the field so i would say that would be my superpower ryan so so a good communicator um was it something you just always could do or is it something that you had to develop just to collaborate a bit on uh break just to give a little bit more insight if you know me if you know me i like speaking i'm Uh (laughs) like i'm a fun person i like making jokes so like (laughs) so it is something that i had but something that I need to, that I had to learn, like it's easy to say, like yeah, all, all of ah. us can communicate. But something that I had to learn is to have the specific communication with each player and learning how to treat each player, how to communicate on different, different, um, like phases of the field, different phases within the, the, the team and all of that. Mm-hmm. So that, so that makes it the difference from normal communication and rugby related communication especially in the team environment ah okay right Daryl, anything on on that what you would like uh, to uh no that's that's i mean that's brilliant to to hear how damien's process is about what he thinks his strengths are and how that fits into the team and obviously to his to the to 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 his ability you know on the on the field and obviously off the field we just got a question here from benzita uh, you would like to know, you know, Dan, uh, we were talking about earlier about goal setting. Um, what's what's your tips, you know, for for how to be disciplined, you know, uh, concerning your goals, how to not, you know, go astray from your goals. If you have a one or two tips, you know, it's just to be disciplined on it. Yeah, um, I can't pronounce his name, but. Yeah. To for like jumping, said, jumping, like, like how to be jumping. disciplined on on mm-hmm. Njambi. Njambi mm-hmm. to sit discipline on your goals. Like it's very easy for anyone to speak about it. Even for me, it's easy to say you need to do this. You need to do this. Like for me, normal discipline is if you have to wake up early, you need to wake up early. If you need to take your nutrition, you need to take your nutrition. If you need to go and run, and you need to sweat, you need to puke, you need to bleed. That's what you need to do. And that's and that's the easy part. But if you know that this is what I want to achieve at the end of the day, mm-hmm. then you would know what you need to do exactly to achieve that. Your body will tell you that's just how God has created us. That's just how humans are. If you don't feel that, if you don't even feel, let's, let's say you need to wake up at six o'clock and six o'clock comes and you feel like, ah, oh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to wake up, but you don't feel bad yeah. for not waking up at sick, then you know that this is not for yeah. you. But if you yeah. do feel bad, then you know that I need to wake up now, because that's my body telling yeah. me that yeah. I need to wake this up, and that's for the you. discipline you need to have. Yeah. You so, so, so the to, thing is like, yeah. hey, like, so just, just to, just to <laughs> like clarify, that. so it's, like, I like you get lost easily. It's taking action, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> this is not for you, Alan. Yeah, basically, take, taking action, taking like action. Yeah. Go to sleep is not for you. <laughs> That's tough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, taking action. Yeah. That's need to wake up, I yeah. love it. I love it. I love it. Just, uh, just another one. Just another one. Once again, for everyone, keeping engaged, for following us and liking it and sharing this. All right. This is an awesome chat. And I hope you guys at home are enjoying it. Okay. If you've not already, please share it. Subscribe. And please fire away with the questions. We've got another uh, question from Sheridan um, asking Damien. There's a great photo of you and Aaron Smith. You know the the the, the all black halfback, the scrum of Aaron Smith. Um, can you share what you guys were talking about? So this looks like it's after the game. 
and and you know, stadium <laughs> in the background, and you guys are taking a knee on the grass, and you're having a yeah. chat. I mean, that's a class photo. You know what I mean, so that's on a lot of people's minds. What were you guys talking about? Firstly, I think I'm going to try and expand as much as I can about this <laughs> and about Aaron Smith because Aaron Smith's my role model as a scrum off in the rap environment and I looked up to him so, so much. So back in 2015, I didn't play against the All Blacks. Eugene, Eugene and um, yeah, Eugene played and Aaron Smith also wasn't playing. So luckily for me, I could exchange shorts with him then. So he gave me his shorts and we had a small chat in 2015. And in 2019, I got the opportunity to play against him. So that was firstly for me a very, very proud moment, playing against him and even playing against the All Blacks. And I'm sure for all of us as Namibian players, it was because I know in 2015, Darren wasn't playing against the All Blacks and mm -hmm. we both were playing against the All Blacks in 2019. So it was just mm -hmm. something so, so amazing for us. And then after the game, like myself, Eugene and Demasha were sitting with each other. So I wasn't actually speaking to him alone. So he just came up to us and like obviously he greeted and just said, hey, I you mean you had a great game. And then I can't know, I don't know if you remember, but the one time when Jordy Beard was kicking, I ran up and I charged him down. So then he just he asked me, like, how did I get to the ball? And obviously, he just you don't want to, you don't want to sound cocky as a human being. So you just play it off. He's like, no, I was just trying, I was just running. So yeah, and then like he, he asked that we should exchange like kit. And then I just told him, no, 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 I don't want to exchange kit here because I want his full kit. <laughs> So <laughs> yeah, so I told him I'll, I'll come to the changing room and we can change there. <laughs> right. And then, and then obviously I, I had to tell him like in 2015 that the situation oh. I explained earlier that that was the mm. situation and like it's just mm. so nice playing against him and all of that. Yeah. And like now we have actually made we're changing messages on Instagram and so forth. So it, it, it was actually a great, great encounter with him at that moment in time. Brilliant absolutely brilliant you know so hopefully you know normally people obviously see stuff they're like whoa what's going on there you know it's it's nice to to hear from damien himself what the chat was all about and the fact that you told him no i don't want to change with that i wonder his face was probably like oh sorry for asking but what you actually meant was let's go to the changing rooms then change the whole kit i like that you know what i mean so hopefully yeah. obviously <laughs> for, for anyone listening you know, you, you know, be inspired, be inspired because that's what it's all about. You know, you've got to have someone that's a slight higher level than, than yourself and always, you know, see if you can can match that or even be better, exactly you know, become right. world class at what you do. Um, you certainly do have all the, the qualities, Damien, you know, and, and I'm not just saying this. Um, that's as, right, as thanks. a scrum off, you've, you're, like I said before, your skill set is you've got a very strong skill set. And, and, you know, your yeah. box kicking, your technical kicking, your passing, your game management, communicating, you're confident. That's, you're ticking the boxes. I'm sure there's always room for improvement for things that you'll know about your own game where you feel, oh, I need yeah, to improve yeah. one. But, you know, I'm, I'm being serious. Keep on going. Keep on going, my brother. You're doing really well. There's another question from Simone asking, do you have a rugby team uh, you would love to play for, maybe in the future? Any team? As a youngster, I wanted to play for the Bulls because I was supporting the Bulls. But when I went to school <laughs> in Cape Town, I became like I, <laughs> I played Cape and Week for Western <laughs> Province, so I became a Western Province player. So I wanted to play Super Rugby <laughs> for the for the Stormers, but I didn't get the opportunity to do uh -huh. so. So for now, I think uh -huh. I would just love to play in a Premiership club. I don't know which club in the top 14 mm -hmm. or premiership club. That's that's probably like the future goal for me. Awesome. Awesome. Nice. Well said. Well said. Um, Daryl, uh, do you want to go for the next question? Um, uh, from yeah, uh, um, another one. You know, just for, yeah, just for everyone uh, that's listening, I'd like, like to give you some background mm -hmm. about Damien a bit. So when Damien, you know, started, you know, becoming a rugby player, oh, hey, let's you play with us. You played a bit, you know, and uh, we we used to give him a lot of grief, a lot of grief. Like people like, still do. People who didn't, yeah, well, still do, yeah. But then people who didn't know what, like probably thought, yes, sir, these guys are kind of maybe like maybe too harsh on him, or you know. But it, it was never about that. It was about 
us realizing the type of player he is that, you know, he, he's got the skill set, he's got the mindset, obviously, to make it. But we wanted to challenge him and to give him that kind of tough love. But then, you know, Damien is the type of guy that, he, you know, doesn't matter what you say to him, he understands that why the why we're doing this. Mm. We're not trying to be mean, but we're trying to keep him humble and trying to give him the right info, you know, telling him, although maybe he had a man of the mass performance, we as friends or as, you know, his mates, we will tell him that, listen, you had a good game, but listen, this is Africa. We're going to the World Cup. You need to do better. You know, that's how we need to have mm-hmm. those strong, uh, direct conversations. And I, and I guess the, our whole team was like that. We kind of had this, you know, the honest uh, mm-hmm. opinions about each other without being too harsh. But then I think mm-hmm. Damien has got a good, you know, he's got a good mindset on it. He's got a good work ethic. And that's important, you know, especially mm-hmm. if you come to Namibia or you go to a World Cup with a team that people would normally think, you know, obviously we're not number one in the world, but then the, our team, we won't win the, the first game of the World Cup by having a bunch of superstars that, that's arrogant or whatever. We need hard workers, people that's there for the cause. And that's what Damien reflects, you know, because he, he doesn't, he, he never forgot where he came from and all that stuff. So that's brilliant, Damien. You know, I just wanted to give you... Um, uh, Afi Bay. A kudos, a kudos on that. <laughs> but then, uh, you know, then it's just touching, just touching, touching on the on the last game you played or the last uh, tournament on the World Cup. What would you say, like uh, in the last two World Cups, it was you, you know, it's easy to say now the best memory is going to the World Cup or you, know, you know whatever. But then, what would you say for you personally is like the the best memory of the two different World Cups? You know. The, the the memory that I personally keep with myself and which is personally for me the best was in 2015 on our on my on our way to play against Tonga. It was the first time I was in the team and just driving to the to the um to the stadium and you know the World Cup song, The World in Union. Mm. And I was mm. listening mm. like to it on my headset and I just like got emotional and started crying in the bus. And that was 2015's best memory for me. And just like you go, like you think back and where you come from and all that. And then in 2019, driving to my first game again, to my first game again in the team against Italy. And then I was listening to the song again. And as we came to the stadium, and like I see Arizona Stadium, Japan, you're such a beautiful country. And I just start crying again. Mm. And like I'm just thinking about my family mm. again. And that's that's personally mm. for me the yeah. the best memory from both World Cups. But on the field, I would definitely say scoring scoring the nine points against the All Blacks. <laughs> okay, that's good. That's good. Awesome. awesome, awesome, and it's, and it's awesome. great to hear you. you, you awesome. speak, that's that's um, it's, it's, you know, it's awesome to hear you speak about this stuff because that stuff no one, nobody can buy or nobody can take away from you. You know, you know that stuff you will exactly. tell your kids one day and their kids one day and. They will be telling you, Grandpa, cheese that story again. But that, that's things that people should listen to and be inspired, you know. And that's obviously something that, that will drive you forever. Nah, definitely better. Yeah. Vinny, you still there? Darryl? Okay. Um, yeah, so so on that, you scored an unbelievable try from a line-out or a scrum, I can't remember now. Where ball moves, quick clearance, run around, wrap around, ball gets to the wing, back to Daryl, Damien on the inside, good, strong to Daryl, give me the ball. <laughs> Daryl pass the ball to Damien, Damien puts the hand break down. He, he still, he down still owes cut. me. He still owes me. Like, <laughs> hey, what was that like? What was, what was going on? Early in the year, early in the year, we played Argentina. <laughs> He robbed me of a try, clear try. He dummied me. <laughs> <laughs> like he tackled it. I was open try. We had so much banter about it. I got the opportunity and I gave him the try. <laughs> he tells me. <laughs> Christmas is coming up, so hopefully I'll be getting a present from him. <laughs> oh, but that was that was a that was a brilliant finish. It was a it was a good that, yeah, was a good line. That's what I'm saying. Integrity. You guys were. It looked like there was a belonging, and and credit again to all the coaching staff and the players who bought in. You know, like uh, I wasn't obviously involved with it, but from an outside point of view, it just looked like you know the guys were having a 
passion to play play for Namibia. Here's the next question also. You know, I'm just going to keep interacting. I hope you guys uh, don't mind. Damien, you're still okay? You're still comfortable with us? No, no, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Yeah? I, wait, and everyone else? I just wanted to say, yeah. I just wanted to... Yeah? I just wanted to thank Daryl. I just wanted to thank Daryl for passing the say, say, <laughs> Carry on. Say again, say again. Uh, uh, I just wanted to thank Daryl for passing the ball to me, so I can score the try, not damning me there. All <laughs> right. But, no, that's cool, man. That's that's a that was a class finish, honestly. Okay. That's what I'm saying. It was it was beautiful, absolutely. Some that's what they would call champagne rugby, but I don't know what they call champagne in Namibia. So, <laughs> okay. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, someone's asking. Um, just a quick one. Someone's asking, um, what was your toughest game? What would you what do you from experience? What was your toughest game in 2019 that you played, Damien? Where you felt, wow, this is this game was super tough. I would say the game against Italy. I just played against Italy in the All Blacks. Obviously, we didn't play against Canada. I would say the game against mm. Italy. Reason being is that it was our first game at the World Cup. Yes, we got confidence mm. when we scored the first points against Italy, but there was still a lot of miscommunication within the game. And some frustration that, like the miscommunication, record a lot of frustration. But we still stick to our plan, what we had to do. That's why the outcome was kind of good for us. Mm. So I would say that was kind of the toughest game. I don't, I didn't play against the Springboks, but I'm sure for our team, the whole team, that the Springbok game was the toughest game for us at the end of the day. Mm. But worth saying that is that as a team and collective, we went in that game with our own personal goals for the team. And we right. achieved that. Whether the outcome and the scoreboard didn't talk like that, but we still reached our goals. So, yeah, but it, I think for the team, the toughest game was the All Blacks. Yeah. Gee. Good, good. So there you have it. You know, it was a close game. You know, the battles that was going on against Italy was a tight game. It was really close. Obviously, yeah. not so much scoreline, but I'm talking about, you know, that you can see the... It, when a game is like that, you know, it's, it's, man, it's, the game probably felt like five minutes. Am I right? Because, you know, it's five minutes and you're back in the changing room. It's like, you know, where did that <laughs> yeah. go? Yeah. Uh, I can imagine. But um, another one quickly. Um, I just want to quickly run through the questions we've got from everyone who's engaging, which we appreciate. How do you remove fear before game? Or do you have any fear? Or, how, you know, what's going on in your mind before game? If you're a bit nervous, how do you deal with it? I'm sure everyone has fear, everyone has pressure before a game because you need to achieve something for the outcome of the team being successful. But for me, I'm a very happy person. So yeah, I would have fear, I would have pressure, but I would always try and choke around. And that's my way of like making myself feel confident and comfortable going to do what I have to do. So yeah, that's how I like try and cut out the fear I have. Okay. Because everyone's different, right? But that's that's a that's a good simple answer. Hopefully that um, they get from that what the what you mean. So another one, Rufus. Rufus has been following us, and he's been here last week, and he's here again. Welcome, Rufus. Thanks for the question, Damien. What was it like playing un the under eighteen training right. week for Western Province and not for Namibia that you know competed in the same competition? What was that like? Well, for me, it was obviously I was very proud and I was very excited because I'm playing for Western Province, which has dominated Craven Week rugby for, for as long as Craven Week rugby has existed. So for me, it was just it was phenomenal. And I kind of felt proud and like that I have achieved that because in 2016, playing for Namibia, then at Grand Como, I was on the bench. So it was for me personally, it was like, hey, but. You didn't start, you were on the bench, but look now where you are now, like in two mm. years' time, you're playing for the best mm. team at Craven Week. And we were the runners mm. and we and we won at Craven Week in 2018. But to answer mm. his question, what did it feel like not playing for Namibia and playing for Western Province? Mm. It felt good though. It felt good. It mm. felt good. It felt mm. good to see that I've reached a high level. Mm. Mm. That's cool. That's cool. Well said. 
well answered. Another question, which before we get back to what we initially obviously were back on track, uh, from Merrilee's governor. I think uh, this is also a very interesting question. What was the feelings around the Canada game being cancelled, especially with this uh, was the game everyone was looking forward to? And then I get a message early in the morning, oh, the game might not be on. So what was your thoughts on that? Obviously, for us to working for five years to win our first game at the World Cup, for every game at the World Cup, setting, setting team goals so that we can achieve all that stuff within the Canada game that we have achieved against the other teams, it was very, very heartbreaking for us. Very, very, it's it's still up until today. It's still kind of an emotional aspect whenever I have to speak about it because that is really something oh. like that has been taken away from you so quick that you've worked to like you've worked so hard for it. But that, as I said mm. earlier in in our chat, like that's how life is. Like you can work so hard, you can achieve anything mm. so quick, but it can true, be taken true. away from you so so quick. So you need to appreciate every moment that you have. Yeah. But yeah, it was very, very heartbreaking. I'm sure it felt the same way for Daryl. No, man. Thanks, thanks for yeah, thanks for sharing that, Damon. Because you know, you guys, like I said, you were hitting form. You know, you were hitting form, and people could see there, there's a storm brewing. Because I mean, that would have been a really good contest, you know. Um, and you know, and then obviously things happen. Daryl, do you want to touch on that? On just on yeah, that, it's, like, it's... what did you guys? No, it's it's um, well, definitely from your what point Damien of view said, on, on, that, on that topic. Yeah, it's definitely what Damien said, and to to you know just to answer Marley's um, answer is uh, or the question actually uh, is we planned this World Cup to actually hit that way that once we get to Canada, our best team will be field will be going on the field with the right set of my the, the right mindset of doing their job for the next 60 minutes and the boys will come up and we'll finish the game up, you know, because it obviously um, nowadays rugby is never about 15 and it's about the whole squad of 31 if you go to World Cup, you know, or even the whole squad of 46 if you count the management as well because, and everything kind of worked out and we had challenges along the way, you know, and a lot of stuff behind the scenes went uh, uh, that we had to adapt to, but then it's everything we kind of worked on for the mm. last five, four years. You know, mm. the coaches and management, they continuously challenged us and mm. putting different scenarios. So it was kind of like we were used to it. Once something happened, we were used to it. You know, we were kind of adapted very quick. Whether you're young in the team, whether mm. you're old guy, doesn't matter. Everybody pulled their weight. But then having, okay. having you know, that, that news cause, you know, you, you see the stuff on TV or you hear it on the radio about typhoons mm. or hurricanes. Mm. You, you're not used to it. And in our minds, it was like, ah, it's never going to happen, man. You know, even when it was <laughs> happening in, in Tokyo, we were like, nah, man, it never happened. You know, we, we're still going to play. But then I think that was actually the first moment or the first time in my life, I think I actually had to be accepted and had to be present, you know. Because, you know, sometimes like as a sportsman or mm. as a rugby player, you tend to get a bad news or get an injury or whatever, then you... You quickly get on your horse. What's the next plan? What's my process? I'm gonna get through this. You know all mm -hmm. that stuff, and you take that stuff to you now in the in the world outside of sport. But in mm -hmm. that moment, I think for me personally, it was the first time I actually had to say, "Don't forget about tomorrow. Don't forget about the process. How are you gonna process this? You need to mm -hmm. focus on. You're not playing. You need to accept it and enjoy the moment. You know that you at least exactly. safe. People, you know, people are safe and. It was yeah. very tough. It was very tough, but yeah. it's still haunting. But yeah. No, thanks for thanks for uh, collaborating on that, Daryl, and also for oh, Damien. Thanks for you for mentioning you know the fact what what your thoughts were. Um, fellas, we'll probably be wrapping up. Okay, we won't be we won't be too long. But um, but before we do, we just got one or two more questions, Damien. I just wanted to to ask ask you, you know, you've been playing obviously in South Africa and you've been in South America, you know, and overseas and what, what's the different cultures, what was your, what's your experience, you know, playing in different 
different areas. What, what, what was that like? Or what's that like, if I may ask? South Africa's, South Africa's culture in the rugby environment is definitely the best that I've experienced it, like regarding the professionalism. But I can also say that it's because that I've been there long enough to experience it. And just comparing that to playing for an Amobia, it's that we, 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 still need to, we still need to reach that level a lot. But the culture of South African rugby is basically the, like, that's where the base is set like for, as a professional player. Because if you get any better than that, then you must know that you're playing international rugby for a very, very big country. But culture in general, outside of rugby, mm. it's kind of it's kind of difficult a lot of times to adapt because mm. oh you get like language barriers, you know. But luckily for me, I can speak English, Afrikaans, Spanish, so it mm. wasn't that difficult. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. nice, nice show. Hola to everyone in South America. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> I love it, love it. <laughs> awesome. Awesome, man. That's brilliant. No, I'm just I'm, yeah. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. But but it is difficult. No, it is difficult cool. to adapt to, to a lot of cultures. Uh, uh, but uh. The, 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 the sooner you start making friends and you start realizing, well, I am here now and I need to make the best of the of the situation where I am and I still need to achieve what I need to achieve, then you start like you start adapting very, very quickly. And I guess the key word there is wherever you are in the world, whatever situation you find yourself in and you can't change it, just adapt and then go with it. That's oh, good. Just adapt. Uh, that's a t-shirt. That's, you've got to put it on a t-shirt. Just adapt. Be flexible. Just go with it. I love it. You know your things, man. I love exactly. it. Exactly. Next question. A question from you, Daryl. Uh, um, any thoughts? Anything? Yeah, just, you know, just a uh, last question from my side. Um, if you weren't playing rugby, you know, what, what do you think, you know, I, I know it's difficult to ask now, but what do you think you would do, like, if you, if you weren't playing rugby? If, or, 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 or let's say if you weren't doing sport, what would your other direction would be? I think I would have been the manager of Black House. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> like that. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Okay. I'm joking. Why, why I'm is joking. that? Oh, Sorry, why right. is that's that? an inside joke. But but to be fair, to be fair, right? <laughs> David would make David would make an okay. excellent media manager. David would make an excellent media manager because he's, okay. he's a he's a socialite. He's a media manager. Yes, he will be an excellent. Hey, you know what, will, Damon? One day you know on the TV. I, I always feel like, eh? I always feel like if you're good at something, go with it. Why not? So obviously you're saying <laughs> not now. You'll be a very good. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> not now. Okay. Is there anything you would like to yeah, share but, on it? Okay, but, but, but aren't you? <laughs> yeah, maybe in the future. Like, there's always something you can look into. But I just want to get back to Daryl's question and just answer it, like, seriously. I yeah. think outside rugby or any sport environment, I would have probably mm. went to study and I would have probably been, like, studied to be an accountant. That's probably where I would have headed yeah. to. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so that's so that's um, the answer, answer. But for now, looking into the future, I think becoming a media manager is kind of something that's interesting. That's the way. I can see you now on the TV <laughs> presenting socialite. Because <laughs> he's already a socialite. He's half of the time on Instagram. Why not? Everything. If you're good at it, go for it. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> hey, go for it. You know, now no, good stuff. Let's online. Do media. We'll, we'll be playing rugby on <laughs> we'll be we'll be playing rugby online. At at the, in the backyard. <laughs> Record we'll be playing yeah, <laughs> nowadays anything is online. <laughs> you'll be playing rugby. <laughs> Remember how we used to play in the house? They mean did you did, yeah. did you perhaps play rugby in the house yeah. when you were growing up? <laughs> Breaking everything, kicking the balls and you know what I mean? Like we used to do that all the time, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I yeah, used to break I, a lot of windows. <laughs> that didn't end well. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing, you know, but it's all part of the development process, isn't it? Um, Damien, um, coaches, any coaches that you would like exactly, to, Ryan. that you can, from reflection, uh, any coaches that, that you feel have made a massive impact in your, Lunchbox. played a massive part in your development? Any coaches out there that that, that that worked with you? 
Um, I think personally, like on a personal level with a coach and believing in a coach and knowing what his goals with me and the coach being honest towards me was definitely Phil Davies. Not not just because like he gave me the opportunity right, as a youngster right. to go to my first rugby World Cup, but working work working with him from yeah. then up until now, like he's not our coach anymore, but we still have such a good relationship. I feel like it's just important to personally have a good relationship with your coach on a personal level, believing in him firstly, because if you believe in your coach, you're definitely gonna do good under him. And any team will do under do good under coach that they believe in. So that's just my key. That that's my key. But I just want to thank Phil also because he's not my, my coach anymore. But I just want to thank him also on this um, chat for being the person that he is towards me and to not being rugby that he's been like it was definitely an amazing experience to be part of the success of Namibian rugby with him. That's good. Fantastic, fantastic. Obviously, um, we all have people you know that played a part in our own development. Damien, I must say, right. Your character, from you know, just the way we're talking, and it's brilliant. You know, it, you just you stay true to yourself, and you know, you are you seem like you know you are you you're easy to talk to, and and I'm sure everyone out there listening, you know, that's why they you attract it. You know what I mean, and and don't change, my brother. From just from my personal point of view, whatever people might say or think, sometimes I'm just making an example. You know, don't change. You just do your thing, man. I'm, I'm being serious. I'm absolutely being serious. Keep on going Thanks, because Thanks, we I need more. We need more characters like that that believe in their hard work and achieving goals, especially in Namibia. We need people that obviously, you know, that enjoys the process and and enjoy playing for Namibia. You know, in representing and have, you know, show the people that we care, and and that's what I see in Luke Damon. So. You know, with that, I, I can only say, man, oh, it's it's been absolutely been, it's I've been having fun, and I hope you guys have have, have been having fun too. You know what I mean? That are uh, the same. Thanks for taking time out to come on yeah. tonight. I know last week you couldn't come on too, you know, but it was all good. It was all good, and uh, like I said to everyone listening, please keep sharing this even after this live. This will be on YouTube. Go and share it to everyone that you know, and 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 subscribe it to subscribe it will help us to keep pushing on one more thing damien what next for damien if i may ask what next for Damien? firstly <laughs> we first need to focus on COVID for now but <laughs> in the iraq environment yeah. um i don't i i don't really want to speak so much about it because mm -hmm. uh, it's such uncertain times for mm -hmm. a lot of people a lot of lot of people so mm -hmm. for me it's just to focus on what I need to do. So, because when the opportunity presents itself for me to do what I love and to play rugby, that I'm ready for that when it when it comes my way. So that's what's next for me to just be ready. Be ready. Good. That's another. That's another thing on a t-shirt. Be ready. <laughs> you. I keep talking <laughs> into you. What? Tell anything on that? No, I just want to thank Damien. You know, it's um, it's been a nice talk. Uh, you know, from you. It, you know, hopefully for everyone out there, they've got a bit of a better sense of who Damien is. I know it's always not uh, easy for people to approach you, maybe, but uh, hopefully they've listened in. They can they can share it. Please my link. subscribe. And uh, yeah, thanks thanks again, man. Then yeah, just like for my side, Daryl awesome. and Ryan and the whole Della Up family. I just want to thank you guys for giving me the opportunity to share my story, share my share me and share my personality as a human on your guys' platform. And it's really been amazing being part of this chat, being part of the whole process ever since you guys started. And just, even if it just means liking a picture, like it's really nice to see what you guys want to achieve. And I'm sure with everyone being part of it, everyone pushing it, we are all definitely going to make success of it. And you guys know that I'll always support you guys. You guys are my brothers. And yeah, for everyone coming onto the chat and supporting Della Sports, supporting me, I really, we really, really appreciate all you guys. So yeah, thanks, thanks so much. Thanks, James. Fantastic. Thank you once again to everyone for tuning in. Uh, hopefully, wherever you are, please look after yourselves. You know, stay safe um, and just stay positive. Stay positive.
Damien, I wish you all the best. And once again, I thank you, my brother. Daryl, thank you as Cheers, always. Brother. Hopefully we can do this again in the future. Cheers, Daryl. So with that, Cheers, we're going to say have Thanks, a good Ryan evening and, and speak Cheers. to you. Thanks, fellas. Cheers. Cheers. Right. Thank you. Cheers. Right.